I really don't. I, I just I don't see why Terence wouldn't want to go for it. It's like Brood Lord and Fester and Wings of Liberty. Why wouldn't you want to go for it? It's absolutely incredibly strong. Gives you a brilliant chance of winning. Uh, I say it's very very popular in Korea and like, with all the Terrans. So anyhow. That's just my thought on that at the moment, but um, who knows? Let's see what Sirius is going to do. Maybe he just likes picking at the Protoss and so on. Some people, some people like him. Hmm, who's a good example? Can't think of any off the top of my head, but they go, like, they like doing very aggressive itty bitty attacks constantly. Um, there's a player in the UK actually who does it, and I cannot remember. Love me, what his name is? Terran actually. Robbie G. Robbie G is actually uh, one of those guys who actually will constantly um, just pick it as opponent with little small engagements, multi-dropping all over the place. Now, um, as you say, third is down, turrets going up, print DTs, observers and so on. Actually, surprisingly, with all these turrets everywhere, this server has found the one spot actually where it can survive. We have three Colossus and a drop actually at the third. Does it get any kills at the moment? Does get two workers, so not the most effective drop there. Does pull the army out of position. That's a cool thing with drops. It's they're there about positioning. They're going to try and bait. At least they're trying to punish your opponent for his positioning. You know, like because if he's there defending, chances are not going to do anything. If he's somewhere else, wait. Well, you know, you're going to do something. Or perhaps you know he's um. Or perhaps you make him go attack the drop, and then therefore you've won the positioning game again. You can then get your army to somewhere else. Now we have a warp prism coming across the map. I love this with the speed. Actually, I really actually liked it in the stages of TVP when it first came out. It was used a lot earlier, kind of coincided with those 10 minute timings. But as I say, it's going to be very, very useful in dumping large amounts of zealots. We have another drop coming down here from Cirrus on the right hand side. But in the meantime, in the main, we have a drop, and this is what I mean doing lots and lots of damage. We see our barcode pulling in a huge amount of forces. Cirrus going out and just escaping. And I like that as soon as he smells danger, bam, out there. I'm not going to lose my drop. It's unfortunately in front of this observer. But look at this. We have another drop coming in at the natural. And now the drops are all over the place. Really abusing, or well not abusing, really taking advantage of his opponent's positioning. Behind this, he has a lot of Vikings on the way. Double support and 2-2. Two, two. We have 3-3 three, three, though coming down for our Protoss friend and we also have Storm just finishing off and again this drop is in here. In, out, shake it all about. He is all over the place right now. Really fantastic drop play from Sirius. But he does have some Zealots now that will be very very useful. Does have, um, he's going to use some on the low ground actually to shoot up which is actually quite a smart move. Um, and uh, yeah at the moment Barcode is just planting his uh, units all over the place in fear that he may actually get a drop. I say behind this you have a huge fleet of Vikings and if we have a look at the Templar count right now, let's have a look at the Templar count. Templar count, where are you? Three Templars, so it doesn't have the greatest amount of storms, so actually with good positioning he could actually do very well with these Vikings, but we have three ghosts coming on down and of course um, yeah plus one, plus two, plus two and three ghosts a lot of Vikings and a fourth on the way. Will he build his fourth? We're about to find out. But look at this War Prism coming in on the main. Is it going to drop all the Zealots? Yes, it is. That is a boatload of Zealots. Four DTs, seven Zealots. They are just going to go to town on absolutely everything. They're actually going to kill off the Mobius Reactor, which is really, really annoying since he hasn't researched it. So his ghosts are actually going to have to wait for an EMP. There we go. Down goes the Mobius Reactor. And now we see the Terran is being pulled out of position. And Protoss can capitally macro behind this. He does have more command centers, but anyway, look at this. The DT is doing so much damage right now. I love this mixture of DTs and Zealot. They've become very, very popular recently. And uh, we see Cirrus is trying to clean this up desperately. Now we have more DTs, more Zealots in the third as well. And all of a sudden, <coughs> the economy situation doesn't look too great for Cirrus. And he's, as I say, he's been denied mining on two of his bases. And more importantly, you know, he's killed off tech labs and delayed production. And you have a look at the yeah, you have to look at the supplies. They are definitely in the favour of our Protoss friend. Now, our Protoss, the barcode, decided to attack into the main. Or was going to attack into the main, but he advised against it. There's still a big scary army that, you know, one bad engagement and this bike could literally walk over to the other side of the map and essentially kill him. But again, we have another warp in here huge ton of zealots this time 11 zealots and now he's trying to poke in at the third he's got storms and uh, actually everything is 
very out of position right now for serious. And if I swear if I use out of position one more time, I think my poor audience are going to scream. Anyway, pushing into the third. Here we go. Will he get the engagement he wants? No, he won't because that is a big, ugly choke. Big storm going on to those Vikings. I love the fact that he's using these uh, using his stalkers to good effect to try and snipe off as many Vikings as he can, but he is actually going to go into the engage, coming down the ramp. Will he get the storm? There we go. Defensive storm, double force field going down to prevent any units coming on through. Vikings going in to snipe this. Stalkers actually killing off the Vikings. And oh my goodness me, one storm could actually end all of this bio's life right now. Will he get the perfect storm he wants? DT's in the main do tons and tons of damage. Oh my goodness me, that storm. Storm could have been so prevalent. Anyway, he's taken out his third. He's done so much damage in the main. He's counting. He's saying, hmm, I think I've done a good job here, boys. It's time to go home and see Mrs. Protoss. Or at least, you know, chill the bar. Something, something, something that Protoss do to relax. He's just hanging around the third at the moment. There we go. No, he's actually going to go back. He, he's making up his mind. There we go. He might actually push into the natural. And at the moment, he has two classes, and there isn't actually a single Viking on the map. More DTs are being warped in. Can't quite see where the DTs are. There we go. There are the DTs. I think they're going to go on expo hunting. We have four bases, a lot of gateways, a huge bank for our Protoss, and he is looking in phenomenal shape for SCA right now. And here we go. He's had enough. Choo choo. Here comes the SCVs. DTs though do see this coming. They're just taking out the reinforcements, weakening this push along the way. In comes the last Viking. Now he's going to go for some huge scissor formation on top of this uh, army. SEB to the left and Bio to the right. Will this be the surround of ground? We're about to find out. The nice split from Sirius. Anyway, here comes the engagement. EMP catching the fringe of this big Bio death ball. Has he got any storms? He's got one storm right now. Not really using those SEBs he pulled. And there we go. GG well played from our player Sirius. So that takes. SEA 2 1 0 over O Gaming. That's the team I was looking for. Anyway, let's jump into the chat, see who's watching. Hello, viewers. Okay, so, uh. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness me. So, actually, I didn't realise that it was the N New York Open bracket right now. That was one hell of a timing from me. So, uh. Whoopsie doodle. But, uh, yes, anyhow. Hello to my viewers. Is anyone actually watching? Anyone actually listening? That would be. See who's in my chat. And in the meantime, let's uh, jump on back. Low oh, gaming. It's not ST. Ginger Mattify. Mattify. Hello, Mattify. And, uh, yeah, we're going to go back go into our second game. Hey, good to see. Good to see I've got some support. That's what I like to hear. You, you, are, you can be uh, my honorary moderator tonight. But actually, yeah, it's the ESO New York qualifiers tonight. So that is why not many people are joining us. At least that will be my theory. So we're going to bang through these games as fast as humanly possible. And then we can all go back to watching ESL. But uh, these are good games, and uh, I like these middle tier games. I think they're exciting. I think they're, you know, I think they're just as good as some top tier games, if not better. And anyway, we now have a PVZ for you, so this will be very exciting. Of course, if there are any requests you want me to put anything on, then do of course let me know. Anyway, jumping into our next game, it is Barcode versus <coughs> Barcode versus. Who have we got? Barcode versus Kespada. Kes Kespada. Kespada. There we go. Okay, so uh, Kespada. Okay, so we want, oh, we've got a Z fan in the audience, and we are on Derelict Watcher, of course. Anyway, spawning down here. Currently 1-0 up for SCA. It is our barcode. The Protoss. And, of course, up here in the top right-hand corner. Trying to even up the score. It is none other than O Gaming's Kespada. There you go. Dramatic. And we have Overlords. And we have Pylons. So what we tend to do is what you know is that the first very lazy observers, what they do is when they want to go eat something, they will 
they will get will zoom onto the overlord and then do a cam follow and I actually haven't switched it over have I there we go let's have the overlord cam overlord cam and thank you to our next viewer who has tuned in of course um, very very cool uh, anyway yeah so uh, PBZ anyway I just want to talk about um, I'm Tom I run Poison TV and of course we have Gentle Giant who is my co-caster and we have a whole other plethora of casters tomorrow we have the Hungarian Pro League oh my god we have so much for you tomorrow night we have the ESL Late Night Cup we have the Pro League and we also have um, yeah we have another event uh, the uh, uh, what is it called? Thunder Dogs as well. I think we may even be casting that as well for um, well for Thunder Dogs. So do check out. And of course on Sunday we've got the ICO and the Hungarian Pro League. And Sunday we've got the Hungarian Pro League. And on more. Oh God, we've got tons. And then Sunday we've got Go for too. Uh, so anyway, thank you to everyone who's joined in and joining me with my English kind of antics. Now look at this. This is. I'm not sure if this is intentional. Anyway, we have one gas with one worker. And we have a second gas. We have a 7, 15 and a 17 gas going down. But only one on gas right now. And now we have two on gas. This looks like it could almost be intentional. To get a very specific amount of gas. But, oh my goodness me. We have a triple hatch before pull. So, um... Wow. Okay, so this is, uh... I, I don't get to see this very often, so this is exciting for me because I want to see the, what this one. I saw it once. Naniwa did it when I was casting, and um, what actually happened was is Naniwa did some three get pressure, put it onto the third on this very map actually, killed a few queens, killed a few drones, and then pulled back and kind of like got that balance back, um, which is what you kind of go for. You need to kind of get those uh, get restore the balance it's not so no so like it's like oh my god he's put a third hatch down i must kill the hatchery because it's just not going to happen most competent zergs are going to be like they're going to build just enough lings to defend it but what you can do is you can force the lings you can make them not build drones you can build the queens and so on um another alternative is to just straight up foregate them which uh, again has a slight risk factor to it so obviously you have to do you know that is more of a kind of severe um pressure build and actually Oh, he's going for a forge, so he went gateway expand into forge. I like this. So, uh, you know, he gets his tech out nice and early. Um, and, it, you know, why not? He's not really at risk. But, of course, he is at risk of getting out macros right now. And has he identified it? We have a look. No, he doesn't have a clue of what's going on. Which, sometimes when you see that, that, that your opponent actually isn't, like, they don't scout, is kind of a sign that they have a build and they're going to do it no matter what. And at the moment, he does look like he's got a build. We see plus one looks like what well, I will see it's kind of suggest that he's going for plus one there you go plus one armor three gates on the way and walk gate finish is going to be going on the way we have four lings as well um, so they're going to be used to kind of hunt down all kind of sneaky pylons and so on we've got some great overlord placements as well he's putting them in all the obvious spots uh, interestingly enough not by the third which is another popular spot so if you're a zerg check by the zone arc towers it's always a popular place for pylons um, but I say there's always new and sneakier ways to find uh, pylons. Anyway, so gateways are about to finish up, and of course we do have yeah we do have lots of Chrono Boost going down on these, and also we have double gas coming down very early-ish Robo timing, um, and I want to see what he's doing with this plus one. Perhaps we're going to see some form of warp prism play. Why do I say what prison play? Because if we have a look at this currently, there are no forward pylons whatsoever. The only thing out to scout about is this mothership. We've got a roach bailing nest actually coming down. Interestingly enough, now I used to know a player that did something very similar to this, but actually that is a huge amount of zerglings right now, and this does look like it could be a very, very aggressive play coming out for Kesper Dad right now. And anyway, here we go. So we have a lot of sentries here. Four sentries which are going to be very key in defending this. We have the Mothership Core, of course, he's going to go in, and he sees absolutely everything. And he's got to be asking himself, hmm, is there, is there a huge fleet of Zerglings that you're taking for a walk? And, oh my god, he's even morphing the Banelings under the Mothership Core. So the Mothership Core kind of sees absolutely everything, and already, look at this, 
There you go. War prison play. I called it. Okay, so he didn't have a four pile on, which kind of suggests. Anyway, but it doesn't matter now. He instantly force fields there. Rightly so. This is exactly what he needs to. That mothership core is going to be coming back ASAP. We've got cannons and pylons coming down.